So today we are building a C201 TXS controller and when you look at the back side of the front panel you see all these um, bolts and these are for mounting all the boards which I have lined up in front of you right here. Generally we design our products in a modular way so that each of the things that come together in this design could be uh, exchanged for repair if that was necessary or you could also put something else, which is the reason why we offer so much configurability of our products. Basically, the extra buttons up here is an option you select when you buy it, and it just means that we order it with a hole for yet another BI8 board of this type. But it's also easy to put smart switch boards up there or something else that our customers want. And the same goes for if we take a product like this one, it's a C51, where you also have two BI8 boards, and an Arduino with a breakout shield and even a guy like this one which is a C90S and it's easy to take the front out here. And here you can see on the back side of this guy we have BI8 board, we have a slider board, BI8 board, smart switch board and over here we have the breakout shield on top of an Arduino Ethernet shield on top of an Arduino Mega. Everything is connected with a flat cable so we have this daisy chaining principle, so it's kind of easy to just, let me show you, let's say I want to exchange this one, just take the flat cable off, like that, I unscrew it, put a new one, put the flat cable back on, like that. So this is the principle underpinning all our designs, and this is what we're going to create today with this one. Okay, just to recap, we are going to assemble this. We need two BI8 slim boards. No, in fact, we need three. We need one BI8 special edition. We need a. Uh, we don't need this one because we are using the T-bar. And we need a smart switch board. We need a rotary encoder board and a tiny breakout board for the T-bar. So some of this has already been assembled. For instance, if you look at the back side of this one, we have chosen to mount the T-bar already. It also has the um, it also has the uh, the breakout board here on top. Um, we have also mounted the display over here. Almost, we still need to fix it with some nuts. And the display comes in a package like this one from SparkFun with an uh, a serial backpack. So basically, you need to solder these two together. Uh, cut off some of these, um, the, uh, the, the header pins right here, um, which will otherwise touch the, um, the enclosure. And then we have the tiny breakout board, which uh, gives us the, the two times eight or two times four header that we are generally using to connect all these. So um, if you have assembled all these components which are on the table in front of us, we have the encoder board here, the smart switches, the BI8 board here. Uh, in the bill of materials for these, we also include some uh, additional things like uh, nuts that we prefer to use and some washers, fiber washers and uh, nylon washers. Then we have these tubes, whoops, which are spacer tubes that keeps the board in the correct dis distance from, from the enclosure. And from this point, it's basically just a question of mounting them on the bolts. I am assuming right now that all these boards have been tested electrically for their function um, prior to this particular moment. Um, but that's, yeah. So, let's, let's get started. Just a quick note about the washers. The washers has uh, often the one side cut off and this is simply so that they, they fit in with the, the hole which is here. There's a very little distance to the buttons. So uh, maybe the washer wouldn't fit directly. We need to cut off a little bit in order to make it work. And that's the general principle we are using when, 
we uh, need to fit a washer in a place where it doesn't fit naturally. Um, and that's kind of the case in many places. Also on the top side, sometimes uh, when we are mounting the bolts, because um, there can be a component that, that blocks the way a little bit. So at this point, we have an assembled front plate for our C201 TXS, and it looks awesome like this. Um, that should be no surprises. Of course, we have tested that all the buttons are working, that there are no friction or other problems related to that. And on the back side, it looks like this. So the next task we have in front of us is to connect the Arduino Mega with the Ethernet shield to this whole thing. And in the particular enclosure for C200, we are having um, the, the, the Arduino mounted on, on the back and it's uh, mounted on a support plate like this one right there. Okay, so basically we put this aside and uh, what we need to do is uh, take off the shield if we already mounted it like that. Then we use some tiny spacer tubes and these are three millimeter spacer tubes. Then we put the Arduino board on top of that. Remaining three. Then we put the Ethernet shield on top. Before we do that, we would like to uh, notify the uh, MAC address of the Ethernet shield. Important because we need to use it when we program the device. And actually what I usually do is I take it off. Put the Ethernet shield and the MAC address goes on the bottom of the support plate. I have cheated a little bit and prepared myself by creating <coughs> the Arduino breakout shield and it has a flat cable connector already with connectors which are, um, um, yeah, what do you say, it's, they are not crimped on, but it's like you can just use a normal plier and then you, you smash it onto the cable and the connection is made automatically. So um, this breakout shield goes on top and because we're using smart switches, we need an additional connection to the pins behind here. And this is it. And when this is done, we basically need to connect it to this one. Yeah, I think we could now slide this one into the enclosure. So you see the, the complete enclosure for the C200 or C201 is this one. Oops, that's a small screw we need. And um, it's kind of neatly fitting in here. If we just slide it down the front. like this, the plate for the back here. And then, ah, I'm gonna take this one up. Because now we are gonna look at the unit from this angle. So basically the first plug goes into this BI-8 board. The next one goes to this down here. You can do it in, in any order you like. Finally, the smart switch board. Right there. And the last connection goes to the encoder board in this corner. So when all this is done, we are now ready to mount the Arduino itself on the side. So now all these internal components have been mounted and connected. And uh, I would like to just quickly tell you how these are um, addressed. So. Um, the first connection is to this BI-8 board, then these three BI-8 boards, and it's the small address dip switch which determines which address they have. So this one has been configured for address 0, address 1, address 3, and address 2 over here, and the smart switch board has address 4. So uh, in this way we are able to communicate to each of the boards separately. And we are now going to apply some power before we close up the box. And um, first we take the power cable and then we take the USB cable for programming. Now, I assumed that we had tested all the different components individually. And we might even have tested them together with the integrated system test. 
Now that they are together in this box, I suggest that you do another test of the individual components. And then finally, and this is what I'm going to show you now, you run the integrated system test on the whole thing. So um, from Arduino, so you go to examples, score how you tell and then you load the integrated system test. And you upload this guy. Voila, there we go. So this is the integrated system test running on the system. We have seen that in another video. So I'm not gonna go through all the details of it, but we can test that all the buttons are working. We can test the smart switches are working. We can use the encoder and we can confirm that the menu seems to work both the, the lower encoder and also um, the, uh, the upper and the lower encoder and they work in both directions. The T-bar seems to work and this is confirmed by looking at the display. When you move the T-bar, we see the slider value and the slider is at end in both ends, etc. And even the little config switch on the back side, if you turn the config switch, now it's on, now it's off, now it's on, now it's off. So all these features are confirmed now by the integrated system test and uh, we should be able to close up the unit with the back panel and the side panel. Mm -hmm.